So if you're new to archery like I am and you walk into an archery shop for the first time and you start looking at bows, you might be a little bit intimidated by all these gadgets and gizmos that you see on some of the bows. I'm going to try and demystify some of these for you to kind of give you a base knowledge as to what they are, what they do, and if you need them or not. So when you go to purchase your compound bow, you're going to have the option of either purchasing a plain bow or purchasing a bow package. Uh, usually the beginner and intermediate bows have the option of purchasing a bow package which comes with several different accessories, whereas usually the higher end bows will typically be sold as plain bows because usually the more experienced bow hunters want to cherry pick each one of their accessories. Now the benefit of going with a bow package is that companies that manufacture bows typically have some sort of bulk deal with uh, the, the manufacturers of the accessories. They will buy them in bulk and then pass along that savings to you, which is an incentive for you to buy their bows. So basically buying it as a package, you get a pretty good discount. So the bow that I ended up going with was the Mission Zone by Matthews Archery and I purchased it with the Bow Hunter package and that came with a whisker biscuit, a quiver, four pin sight, and a stabilizer. And then I went ahead and also purchased additional uh, accessories from the archery store, which included a peep sight, a kisser button, a bow release, and a wrist strap. Now I'm gonna go over the functions of each one of these, but if you're interested in knowing more about choosing a bow, check out the previous video uh, on choosing a bow for the first time. Unlike a long bow or even some recurve bows, a compound bow is meant to be used with an arrow rest. So there are three main styles of arrow rest, each with different variations. The three main styles are the launcher style, the drop away, and the containment style. Now the launcher style has two different types, either prong style or blade style. Both of them support the arrow constantly throughout the draw and the release of the arrow. The blade style tends to be a little bit more popular with bow hunters. Both are easy to set and both are highly accurate due to the fact that the arrow has minimal contact with the rest. Now the drop away style is unique in that the rest supports the arrow through the draw, but then it drops away as the arrow is released. Typically a cord or cable attaches the rest to either the limbs or the cable, and as the bow is released, it triggers the rest to drop. Now the containment style rest consists of a circle of bristles or guides that fully supports the arrow from the moment it's knocked through its release. The whisker biscuit is one such style, which is what I have and probably is the most popular for bow hunters and it's the easiest to use. Simply put, a quiver is a device that holds your arrows. Now there are three different types of quivers depending on the type of bow you have and your application. There's the side or hip quiver, the back quiver, and then the bow quiver. Now the side or hip quiver is worn similar to a belt and it's popular among target ar archers because of its quick draw. Now the back quiver is worn like a messenger bag over one shoulder and it's typically used for hunting uh, or hiking because the arrows are out of the way. It is not however recommended for broadhead arrows. Now the bow quiver is attached to the bow and is the most commonly used quiver for a compound bow and for some recurve bow archers. Now I have a bow quiver which holds five arrows and it can be used with either field tip points or broadhead tips. So sights help improve the accuracy of your shot and they come in a variety of different types. The three most common types are fixed pin, movable pin, and pendulum sights. All are attached to the bow using a mounting bracket. Now the fixed pin are the most simple to set up and basically just consist of a circle with various pins that can be adjusted for different yardage. So typically the top pin is going to be set to 10 yards, the next pin down is going to be set to 15 yards, and so on and so forth. The downside to these is having to compensate if your target is between yardages. A movable pin usually has one pin that is then adjusted on a slider scale. While this sight can be more accurate than a fixed pin, it does require the shot to be adjusted, which isn't ideal in bow hunting because you don't want to be fumbling around with yardages when you see a deer in front of you. Now a pendulum sight is a sight that's designed for those who hunt in tree stands. A pin is mounted on a pendulum that allows for more accuracy when shooting at various angles. These types of sights are known to be challenging to calibrate and are only accurate for close target shooting. Now I have a fixed pin sight that has a light to illuminate the pins. A bow peep sight is the rear sight of a bow. It's typically a small ring that's fixed to the bow using a rubber cord. When the bow is drawn, the archer will look through the peep sight 
to the front sight and then line up the target in the background. This helps to improve target accuracy and they're a pretty inexpensive advantage. Stabilizers serve many different functions on a bow, including eliminating noise, helping to reduce vibration and hand shock, and they help to balance the bow and keep it steady. Stabilizers come in all different shapes and sizes and in all different various materials. They typically consist of four main parts, which is the screw mount, the body, some sort of dampening material, and a weight. If you're using your bow for hunting, you may want to consider using um, a stabilizer that's a little bit shorter in length so it doesn't snag on things, that is a little bit lighter in material, and uh, something that can possibly be adjusted. Now I have a three inch Axion stable on my bow. A kisser button is a small plastic device that is clamped onto the bowstring to help keep it in place. When the bow is drawn, the kisser button is pressed against the lips or the corner of the mouth to provide a more consistent anchor point. A sling is a device to help the archer relax their bow hand to ensure that the bow doesn't fall to the ground from shock or forward motion. There are two main types of slings, a finger sling and a wrist sling. Wrist slings are more commonly used by bow hunters. When learning to use a bow, a common mistake for beginners is to have a death grip on the bow. This can cause the bow to torque when shooting. Now a wrist or finger sling is going to allow the archer to relax their bow hand because mentally they know that that bow is not going to fall to the ground. I have a wrist sling which attaches to the stabilizer. Traditionally only fingers are used to draw a bow, sometimes with finger tabs and sometimes with gloves, but to help improve accuracy and a consistent anchor point, most bow hunters will choose to use what is known as a bow release. There are two main types of release aids for bow hunters. They're the index finger trigger release and the thumb trigger release. The index finger release is the most popular and it just consists of release that's attached to either a Velcro or a buckle strap. The release attaches to a string knock that is on the bowstring. The arrow is released when the trigger is pulled. Thumb triggers are similar, but they use the thumb to release the arrow. These tend to be a little bit more adjustable when it comes to position and angle than the index finger release. Now I have an index finger release. So those are the main accessories for a compound bow that help improve accuracy form and consistency of shooting. There are also some additional accessories that I haven't covered for you that you may want to consider, such as arm and chest guards, their silencers, and bow stringers if you're using a recurve bow. Again, I'm not the expert in archery or in bow hunting. I'm simply taking you along as I learn the sport myself and hopefully will give you guys a base knowledge for when you go out and do your own research. If you guys are currently bow hunters and you guys have any accessories that you think would be excellent for beginner archers, uh, feel free to leave those down below in the comments. And if you guys have any questions for me, you can leave those down below. Again, I'm not the expert, but I'll help to answer those questions as best I can. If you guys like this kind of stuff, make sure you like and subscribe, hit that bell notification so that you can be notified when any of our videos post. In the next video, we're gonna be talking about different types of arrows. So stay tuned for that and thanks for watching.